and they, they told me, he said, you know what, funny story, they started smiling, I said, we were going to go to this other church down the street, I won't mention it which way, but, but um, for some reason the car pulled into your, this church, and I said, isn't that funny, and so they're laughing, and they're here with us today, because the car pulled in, amen, <laughs> as that auto drive, so welcome them, and uh, so y'all need to behave today, right, we, got good, we have good people today, and we're blessed today, so we thank the Lord, we're Living Faith Church, faith that you can see, as Mark Tuttle said, boldly said, that gather, grow, and go, amen, it's that faith that we see, amen, we always wanted a church that when people worship God, they can look at them and say, man, look at that church worshiping Jesus. They love Jesus. You can tell by the look at the way that they serve. They love God. Amen. And it all goes back to the glory, not of ourselves, but to Jesus. Right. And so today I got a great message for you. It's going to be encouragement. I'm going to get you out before, you know, the Baptists get to the salad bar. You can beat them there if you're taking dad to the restaurant today. But do you have your message notes? Because it helps me to preach faster if you got message notes. Raise your hand if you don't. If you don't, we have great men that are, that are serving. we got a, a lady in the uh, tower. Um, so they're going to give them. Make sure we, we don't miss Mary. It's vital that she gets one because she can follow along and help me, as she always does. And thank the Lord. Make sure that you check in online. Our, our, our tag is uh, Living Faith SA. Um, Living Faith SA. And not church, but living faith essay and, and uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We're on um, we're on a couple of them. So make sure that you, you see us for that. Good, good, good. Check in and, and duplicate the message. Share it with your friends and family today. Thank the Lord for that today. The Ten Commandments are often portrayed as, uh, again, rules and regulations that you should do. But it's more than two stones, uh, tablets that came down from heaven. They literally came from a loving hand of God. His finger wrote the Ten Commandments, not with lightning bolts and thunder. That does happen in the Old Testament. But God wanted his community to have ten laws that would give them guidance so he could show them how much he loved them. In other words, that there's parameters, just like you would your own children when they're little, not to stick their finger in a lightning, uh, in a, a light socket, <laughs> Or into electrical outlet and, and because it would hurt them. And so God doesn't want, he's taking my fun away by, you know, me not letting me do that. No, God loves you so much that he wants to protect you so you'll have life abundant today. And so we're on commandment number five, which, which is good because of what we're doing today as fathers and honoring them today. And so we'll go back to commandment number four, which Bobby Chance was here, and we weren't able to do that. But we'll make sure we cover that before the series is over. Why don't you go ahead and tell your neighbor right now. Neighbor, neighbor, tell your neighbor, look at them right now. I promise to love you. I promise to love you. You always have that second choice because sometimes, you know, you don't want to look at the other person that sat next to you because you may not know them. But why don't you tell them you better keep your promises. <laughs> Someone noticed that the word father in the dictionary appears in between two other words. And that those words are father, and then above that word is fatigue. And then below that word father is fathead. So uh, to all the fatigued, fathead fathers, happy Father's Day today, right? Yeah, you're right in between those today. There, there's a command that that is in the Bible that has a promise to it, and it's the only one that would appear. And if so, if you were to fold the Ten Commandments with a piece of paper, right down the middle, right at the middle of it would be commandment number five, kind of like it would bind everything together for you. That if you put this one right, right in the middle, it holds the rest of them together. And so it's very important. It's almost like a relationship template that you can add different things in your lives. And if you get this one not perfect, but if you're trying and you're doing the best that you can to honor your mother and father, your life is going to be better. You'll live a long life according to the Bible. It affects your processes in life. It affects your relationships. All of us have been messed up in our heads because something that dad did maybe 30, 40 years ago, what he did in the car as you drove or you did last week. All of us have that, that thought in our head. So I want to address that head on today about what God says about fathers and what God would honor our fathers. And I want to encourage you. There's nothing like a, 
Um, the church has been beat down enough, not that we don't need rebuking and correcting. That's all good at times. But today, let me encourage every father today and let me encourage children today that are in the house because we're one or the other, a son or a daughter today. Exodus number 20, uh, verse 12 says this, the New Living Translation, honor your father and mother, then you will have a long life full in the land that God is giving you today. So we watch the news and you don't need to even watch just the first five minutes. So I'm not going to go into the the corruptness of society. There is trouble at home, right? Watch six o'clock news. You'll see it every night that there's trouble. So we don't we don't need any explanation that we know that there's erosion in the home. But God set up the parameters and family that we could learn God's ways by the parent. It was his will that they wouldn't learn it. And church is good, but that would be a supplement to the teachings of mother and father on how they would teach children today. And so it would be passed on from generation to generation. So if the younger generation is constantly fighting with the older generation, how many know our society is going to come apart? There are warnings of that. Um, when you uh, when you look at the news, there are warnings of that in decades before, as you, as you see riots and, and and all the other things, marches and, and we march for freedom. And that's all good. I'm not getting into that. But when a young generation is coming against the old generation, nothing can good can come out of that. Do you understand that today? And so this is the only commandment that has a promise with it today. And so there's a special blessing that if you honor your parents, that you'll be blessed with a good life. And if you don't have parents, you can still respect elderly people. You can still help people. You can take a meal over to them. Elderly neighbor, you can go ahead and ask them if there's a need in their life. Like many of you do, you exemplify that living faith. You, you bless other people. It, you you want to reach the older generation, because not because of selfishness, because God smiles at that. And he goes, that's a good thing that you're doing. I'm going to bless you. And you say, you know what? I'm going to help a coworker instead because if they put a good word in for me, I'm going to get a promotion. That, that's okay. But you know that you can get better blessed, more blessed if you bless the elders in the church, if you bless the elder generation, because God looks at that and says, there's nothing that I won't withhold from you in living uh, Prove me and I'll show you how much I can bless you. If you bless somebody that can't bless you back at work, they'll bring you your favorite meal because you gave them an attaboy. An elderly person sometimes can't they don't they can't do that because there's nothing that they can bring back. But let's let's thank God that he can do more than. can. So Paul, when he saw the Ten Commandments in the New Testament, centuries later, wrote the Ephesians church, his church. And he said this to them in the message Bible. Honor your father and mother is the first command that has a promise. This is the only one that has that promise attached to it. Namely, that you'll live well and have a long life. Right, everybody? So children, you have a responsibility to obey your parents. But parents, you have a responsibility to teach your children obedience. And that can only be taught in a home today. It's the most important thing that you'll ever do as a grandparent, as a parent today. Amen. Children don't need to be taught how to disobey. They got that within them because of Adam. Amen. How many are you going to kick Adam when you get to heaven, right? Because he taught your travieso to be more travieso, right? Yeah. Children, um, it's essential that they learn um, obedience in the home because what will take place is when God calls them to obey, they won't obey God <laughs> because they won't obey you. You taught them to obey you as a child, and so therefore, I mean, I don't want to obey God, because that's going to take away. No, we obey God even if we don't understand, because even as a child, we obeyed mom and dad, even when we didn't understand, and we got it later. Oh, they were trying to protect me. How many of you, like, had an aha moment when you were older? Yes? So we put God in the center of our lives, the fold in our lives, and it affects our past, our present, and even our future today. Why should you why should you honor your mother and father? Because it will affect the way you live. Right? I'll help you with the hard ones today, right? Um, <laughs> there was um, there next time that your children or your grandchildren are disobeying you, you should tell them with a threat, do you want to live a long life? 
A good child will lengthen his father's and mother's life. Therefore, God promised to lengthen theirs. You ever see a parent that's been so beat down by their kids? So beat down, their grandchildren have beat down the grandmother and grandfather, taking advantage of them. The life cycle is shortened of a parent that doesn't honor God. The way it's quiet in this Baptist church. But you see that your life will also be shortened because of the example of what you're doing back by not honoring. Amen. We want to set, be set free as a son and daughter here of bitterness so we can be that free parent today. The fifth commandment really speaks of just having healthy relationship with people that affect us on the outside. Also, simply put, you'll determine, you, you will be determined by your success on how you honor your mother and father today. And it impacts your relationship with God. The study once disclosed that if mom and dad attend church regularly, 70 regularly, not once a month. Give me a good amen. amen. 72%, 72% children remain faithful in attendance. If dad attends, this is where it's big. If dad attends regularly, 55% of child, they, they get it the next generation. They keep coming to church. If mom attends, it goes down drastically. 15% children then faithfully attend. If neither attend, only 6%. Some of you are miracles in this house because you maybe never had a mother and father that brought you to church. But you came, amen, and you're that miracle. It, it's God's design that parents are placed over the authority over their children today. Now, there are two parts to this command. One's about the children honoring their parents. And the second one is about the parents being honorable today. And so let's get committed to honor everywhere we go, right? Number one is this. Let's get ready. Uh, respect their role today. Now, this is serious business because if a child doesn't learn to respect at home, this is before pre-K to SA, first grade, kindergarten. If they do not learn to respect um, their parents at home, they will not respect the teacher. They'll not respect the neighborhood decent parent or godly parent. If a, per, if, a, if a child doesn't respect his parent, here's what will happen. That high school to coach that tells them what to do, they'll not respect that karate dojo either, right? If a, parent, if a child doesn't learn to respect, amen, they will not respect the police officer later on when they get the car. They will not respect the word of God. They will not respect God. Amen. Barbara Bush, a, a great first lady, um, president, um, of a, of a, she said this, success does not depend on the White House, but it depends on what happens in your house. <laughs> yeah. Do you understand the breakdown of a family that if that family is causing drama on that block or in that hood that are in that apartment complex, that whole apartment, cl cl that whole apartment complex suffers, that whole neighborhood suffers. Because the one house that the police are always at at midnight or there's always something going on, that whole block is ruined. All because parents have lost their authority. Parents aren't honored. They're not honorable. Do you understand that? I, I recognize today the word honor comes from this word in the Hebrew of, of just weight. That something would be placed upon an individual and there would be weight upon it and glory upon it. And that's what God wants. That's his intended picture as we point back to how do we live biblically today. It's not impossible to live by God today. Amen. I've had my struggles with my dad when he was alive as a teenager. But here's what I noticed when when I was a boy about 16 years old about my dad. Man, I thought, man, I can't stand to be around my dad. I, you know, I just eat. He, you know, but uh, he's the old man. I got to, you know, I'm living in his house and that sort of thing. But you know what? When I moved out and I got to be about 26 years old and I got married, I was astonished on how much my dad learned in 10 years. <laughs> you only get that at three in the morning today. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, I, I need to move on. You got Psalm 78. The modern English trans translation says this, he commanded our father's that they should make known to them and to their children that generation that might know them. Even the children who are not yet born, who will arise and declare them, them to their children. That they might set hope in God and not forget the works of the Lord, but keep his commandments. And so I notice right there, there are five generations that appear. If you want to unpack that scripture in your handout today or look at it on the screen. There are five generations. The father... Their sons and daughters, 
that next generation of the sons and daughters, that next generation in that next. So it keeps going when the commandment of God is placed in people's life today. Don't lose sight of history that you have as a mother and father in this place or a son and daughter because godly influence is being breathed on you to affect the next generation today. Parents, your greatest gift today and what God has given you is you're a spokesperson for God. Yeah, you're all that in a bag of chips, bag of flaming hot Cheetos, right? Yeah, they're, mm, those are good, right? They burn good, right? <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about. You'll see, it later. see the movie, it's good, right? A, a parent's role should be to pledge faith. I'm going to pledge faith to my children at home. And that role should be respected by the child. I noticed Jesus when he was dying on the cross and he couldn't. Mary had just saw her son beaten and bloodied and the horrible death. No other mother should see that. Um, But when she saw her son on the cross and Jesus couldn't do anything. John, the beloved disciple, his number one guy, the one that loved him the most, that stuck by him through thick and thin. He told John, he said, that's your mother now. I'm going to die. I want you to take care of her. He met. He respected the role. Mary was now an adult. He was an adult on the cross. Jesus died for her sins, just like he died for all of our sins. But he said he took care of her. He made sure that she was taken care of today. There's a there's a tendency sometimes when people become nonproductive in our culture, in our society, that we put them on the shelf. And God doesn't measure human worth like that, does he? God looks at everyone as a heart that has value and how much that they're needed today. So we honor people by meeting their needs. The second thought is this. Affirm their efforts today. When, it, when you were young, it was pretty simple. You obeyed your parents. You were in their house. But as you grow older, um, you no longer obey your parents, but you honor them. You respect them. So consider writing down memories or typing them into your phone when you get home about the memories that you have for your mother and father and the love that you have for them. Um, My mother would make this killer mole. And um, this was a day before they sold the uh, stuff at HEB that you could kind of cheat. And now when I visit my mom, she suffers a little bit now. And I can't ask her. Because she doesn't remember how to make mole. Mom, how did you make that good potato salad? And she smiles at me and she speaks to me in Spanish. And I try to copy it. And I try to do a little bit of that. I get the cheap box, the cheap uh, mole things from HEB. And I, um, I've learned through TikTok and maybe some Instagram videos that I can soup that thing up and make it a little bit better. Um, I, th- I think sesame seeds are a key when you grind them, but somebody else can give me some insight on that that can make pastor some mole. Give me a good amen. Can you hear, can you hear a brother crying up here? Give me a good amen. <laughs> I'm messing with you. <laughs> There's some things that you need to remember about your parents and, and affirm their effort today. What, what parent would not die for their children in a heartbeat? Yeah. And uh, hearing their child. Um, and, and so when you hear... That your parent has a significant need, uh, you're honoring them and affirming it. And, and parents should feel treasured because of the, what they're hearing uh, from you today. Whether you had the kind of parent that prayed for you or not, you're in this room, you're hearing me. You pray for your parent. So no, the most honorable thing that you can do, the most impacting thing that you can do is pray for somebody. Why not pray for your mom and dad today and ask God to help them? Proverbs 23, 22 says this. Let's say it together on three, loud and strong on three. One, two, three, go. Listen to your father who gave you life. I told Rebecca, hey, I brought you into this world. And, <laughs> and she said, ooh, gross, dad. Don't throw it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Wisdom can never be learned until the attention is caught and won. So we want to make ourselves honorable enough that our children are listening to, it, to us today. Give your parents opportunities to speak into your life and listen to them. Amen. You might have a better perspective of memories today. And so we treasure them. We affirm them. We respect them. And we honor God today by doing so today. Finally, three is this. Forgive their failings. 
Somebody say, I like this guy. He's preaching fast. <laughs> yeah, look at that guy go. Amen. That, that one leader told me, Pastor, you preached really. You, you, you finished early. I don't know what happened. I told her, man, I wanted to get you out of here on time. Amen. It was Mother's Day two, a few weeks ago, right? So that mama was happy. Dad, you're going to be happy. Here we go. And so none of us had perfect parents. I'd ask you to raise your hand, but you could tell me horror stories also. Some of you grew up with terrible, horrible situations that should have never been committed against you. And God has still brought you through that because it's an example right now. You're listening to me. You're hearing me right now. And so what I don't want to do is say this to you. God God said, you know, hey, just ignore it. You're going to be fine. Get over it. Ignore it and deny it ever happened. No, you need to address it. You need to speak truth to your life. But I want you to remember this, that Jesus knew what it meant to be ill-treated. And you're his follower. Jesus knew what it meant to be abused. And Jesus knew what it meant to be falsely accused and lied about. And so if our Savior went through that as an example for us to live our lives today... We live our lives in victory because his victory was won on the cross for us. He's given you that ability now because it takes supernatural ability to forgive. If you're in the world right now, if you're following the world's customs, you're going to have trouble with forgiveness. But if you're tight with God, forgiveness is going to flow from your life of their failings today. Amen. He knew what it was. Um, Jesus, when he gave loving words, he knew what it was to be, for those words to be thrown back in his face. He knew for his family did not understand him. There was one point in Jesus' life, his own blood, his own blood said, you know what? He's a little bit beside himself. He's going crazy a little bit. We need to put him away. And Jesus said, no, 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 that's not going to happen to me. But he was misunderstood by a lot of people. And he was also um, abandoned by people that were very close to him. So Jesus understands and so remember this about forgiveness also. When true forgiveness really happens in your life and in the lives of your circle of love, listen to me. The innocent party almost always pays. The innocent party, oh, I was the innocent one. Well, if you have God within you, you're probably going to pay. Jesus was the most innocent man that ever lived, and he died on the cross for your sins. And boy, did he pay big time. You'll never be closer to Jesus than if you pay and you're offended and you walk through that offense. But the price is worth the payment because there's nothing like not holding unforgiveness in your life. Do you understand that? Amen. You don't want to pay that price. It's already been paid. It, it, I speak from death to life into your life right now. That's why Colossians said, you know, you need to dress a little bit differently. You wore that wardrobe long enough. Take off that bitterness. Take off that hatred. And Colossians 3, 12 says this. So chosen by God. That's everybody that's hearing me right now. You're in the house of God. You have a new life of love. Dressed in the wardrobe that God picked out for you. Compassion. Kindness. Humility. Quiet strength. Shh, shh, shh. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to sh shut up sometimes, right? You'll be stronger. No, I'm going to tell him what to do. No, hombre, cállate, por favor. You got a headache because you yell too much. Let me continue. That was for the, the anyway. Um, <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble. I got to leave. I gotta, so here we go. Quiet strength, discipline, be even tempered, content, second place. I want it. Amen. <laughs> I didn't need to be first all the time. Second place. Give me a good amen. amen. Come on. Yeah, there you go. Quick to forgive the offense. Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. Amen. And regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic all-purpose garment. It's like that favorite shirt that you got, Dad. Come on, those shoes that you don't want to wear, but you put them on. <laughs> yeah, all purpose. God. Never be without it today. Amen. Have you noticed about God's love, beloved, that God keeps reaching out for a reunion? It's always making that phone call, always texting you over and over again. But it's the habit of man like, look, I tried to reach out for you once and you rejected me. So forget you. But God keeps reaching. Aren't you glad for a big God that loves you? It's a big God. Amen. God doesn't require probation either. Come visit the probationary officer. He's over there on that street. You got to go to require forgiveness. 
Once you're free, you're free. Once you've forgiven somebody, the habit of man says it's going to take a period. Now there's trust, and that's another issue. We can talk about that in another sermon. But do you forgive somebody because God forgave you quickly and completely? Forgive God's forgiveness is with complete restoration and honor. It brings us back to the same place that we were once at today. Amen. Amen. The Bible says this, not in your handout, not on the screen. This is if you have if you want to worship God, but all of a sudden you're lifting your hands and God brings into remembrance. I, I my family is going through this because of dishonor. I've offended my father. I've offended my mother, or my my son. I know I have to ask for his forgiveness. It says to leave your gift right there. Put those hands down and go to that person and say, forgive me. I've offended you. And then go back to the altar because you'll be set free. Right, everybody? Amen. And that's a good thing. So forgiveness is so powerful. It's life changing. And our generation that is led before us doesn't want us to have it today. In the name of Jesus, if they could speak to us from heaven, they, they would say, forgive your brother and sister today. Amen. I think a prayer like this is appropriate if you have unforgiveness towards your parent today. Lord, I don't want to spend the rest of my life being angry at my mom or my dad. I know I'm supposed to keep the fifth commandment. And I know I'm supposed to honor my father and my mother. So I'm praying for their salvation. They're far away from you. Please help him, Lord. Please love them, Lord. Please love them into your kingdom today. I release right now the anger from my life in the name of Jesus that I feel towards my father, towards my mother. Completely right now, help me to be free so I'm not dragging this in this baggage the rest of my life into my marriage, into my other children, into my life and my future. In the name of Jesus, I'm set free today. You can pray a prayer like that. Everyone can. Cry out to Jesus and he'll help you. I've done funerals... Um, in the last few weeks and years, and um, one of the precious um, months ago funeral that I did, story set up beforehand, part two, part one was this, grandma was praying for her granddaughter, she says, I want her to know Jesus, I want her to be close to the Lord, and so we were in our small group. I prayed with her. I said, Grandma, I prayed for her. And I prayed for that daughter, that granddaughter. And as I prayed, sometimes God gives you visions of what will take place. And that's a good thing. And I saw that granddaughter serving that grandmother when she was older. And so I spoke that to her. I said, you know what she's going to do when you're older and you can't take care of yourself? She's going to take care of you. Because I saw God show me that, and I want to prophesy that to you right now. And you know what happened at a funeral a few months ago? I was attending there, with, presiding over the funeral of a loved one. That grandmother was trying to walk through that cemetery. And um, at cemeteries, if you walk through them, you know there's unlevel ground, and you can twist an ankle at a cemetery. Y'all, y'all know cemeteries. And I saw that precious granddaughter holding on to her grandma. <laughs> Sorry, taking grandma. Come on, you're you're not gonna fall. I, I got you, grandma. That grandmother could have made it, but that granddaughter made it easier. Do you understand that today? That's what forgiveness does, and that's what honoring does, and that's what um, life does. I'm gonna show you a video in a moment, but I'm gonna just close with a thought of this: a, a word to the parents. Um, if you want honor, then be honorable. Amen. Begin today. God can rewrite your history today. Take God seriously in your home. Uh, Life will go by so fast, and it already has for some of you parents. They were babies, and now they're grown. One day, sons and daughters, you won't have your mom. You won't have your parents. You won't have your dad. So live life quickly. Live life like it's there's no tomorrow for your family. Sons and daughters... You're going to grow up one day. You'll be out of the house. So love the the free rent right now while it takes place. Right, everybody? Um, Parents, receive your role as teachers and guide for your children today. There's a powerful video. Billy Graham passed away a few years ago. 
And when he passed away, there was honoring that took place at his funeral by his children. He had three of them. And the one, Gigi, um, she, there's always one child that even in, Billy, in every family, and Billy Graham had his, and her, her name was Gigi. Let, let's watch what Gigi, how she utilized, gave the eulogy uh, for, her grand, for her father, Billy Graham, the famous uh, preacher and evangelist. I want to thank each one of you for being here today, from those in the very back here in the tent to the very front row. We are blessed and honored that you are here. Thank you. And I have learned this week, as never before, that everybody has a Billy Graham story. And even this week, President Trump told us about his Billy Graham story. As a little boy, his father took him to Yankee Stadium to hear my father preach. And he said, this is a big deal. <laughs> little did they know that their paths would cross many, many years later. But I have my own Billy Graham story. So I'm going to tell you that one. And I've told it many times, and some of you have maybe heard it many times. But it bears repeating because, to me, it speaks to the essence of who my father was and is. After 21 years, my marriage ended in divorce. I was devastated. I floundered. I did a lot wrong. The rug was pulled out from under me. My family thought it'd be a good idea for me to move away, to get a fresh start somewhere else. So I decided to live near my older sister and her family and near a good church. The pastor of that church introduced me to a handsome widower and we began to date fast and furiously. My children didn't like him, but I thought, you know, they were almost grown. They didn't know what they could, they couldn't tell me what to do. I knew what was best for my life. My mother called me from Seattle. My father called me from Tokyo. They said, honey, why don't you slow down? Let us wait to get to know this man. They had never been a single parent. They had never been divorced. What did they know? So being stubborn, willful, and sinful, I married a man, this man, on New Year's Eve. And within 24 hours, I knew I'd made a terrible mistake. After five weeks, I fled. I was afraid of him. What was I going to do? I wanted to go talk to my mother and my father. It was a two-day drive. Questions swirled in my mind. What was I going to say to daddy? What was I going to say to mother? What was I going to say to my children? I'd been such a failure. What was he going to say to me? You, we, we're tired of fooling with you. We told you not to do it. You've embarrassed us. And let me tell you, you women will understand you don't want to embarrass your father. You really don't want to embarrass Billy Graham. <laughs> and many of you know that we live on the side of a mountain. And as I wound myself up the mountain, I rounded the last bend in my father's driveway. And my father was standing there waiting for me. As I got out of the car, he wrapped his arms around me. He said, welcome home. There was no shame. There was no blame. There was no condemnation. Just unconditional love. And you know, my father was not God. But he showed me what God was like that day. When we come to God with our sin, our brokenness, our failure, our pain, and our hurt, God says, welcome home. And that invitation is open for you. Thank you, and God bless you. Amen. Welcome home. Amen. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> Value your family and make them a priority today as you get home today and love on people, love on your father, your mother today. God promised a long life um, for all of us in this room, and it will take place in this thought what I love about the Ten Commandments is it mirrors something that Jesus fulfilled all of the Ten Commandments. He did them all because he was a perfect. All of us in this room have messed up the Ten Commandments. We 
No one has arrived. Jesus was the only one that really honored his mother and father. But why did Jesus die at 33 years old on a cross? That's fairly young, isn't it? It's not, that's not living a long life. He died that early so you could live a long life. So you could see his example and have his spirit within you, which is the precious Holy Spirit. And you could live a long, full life today by honoring your mother and father. The curse can be broken off of your life today if we begin to receive Christ as our savior, as the one that fulfilled. Because we need Jesus every day. Amen. Amen. And so we say welcome home today because God's made a way for you today. You receive the, the word of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Will you obey the word of the Lord with me? Amen. In the name of Jesus, let, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I, I thank you for your word. And I thank you for the Holy Spirit. I pray, God, that you would do your work in the church today. That the people of living faith, that their hearts would be stirred. And uh, we would, Lord, know that we would forgive right now if there's... Um, something as a child of God that is holding back our relationship ultimately with you. And that's where, where we don't want God. We want to be free as parents here, as sons and daughters, as mothers and fathers today. We thank you, God, so forgive our failings. And we ask that in a simple prayer. Lord, forgive me if you need to say that right now as a child of God, as somebody that walks with Jesus. The second prayer is this, as I pray, Jesus forgave all your failings while you were still a sinner, which means he's waiting on you uh, to say, I received the forgiveness of Christ. Don't push that away because the door, uh, there's a knock on it right now. And you know who's behind that door? It's Jesus. And he's saying, you know what, I want to come in. I want to have a relationship with you. I'm not a bad God. I'm a good God. I'm a perfect father. And I'll show you the way today. God has a higher purpose and he has a complete purpose for your life. Uh, And if you call upon the name of the Lord, you'll be saved today. That's everyone in this room today. That's everyone that's watching right now and listening. If you're in this room today... I'm not going to embarrass you, but I'm going to ask that your hand is slightly lifted and you can do it as an emoji on the uh, screen today. You can just say my hands up. If that's you today, I want to pray for you personally. I'm not going to embarrass you, but I'm going to ask right there where you're at. That will be your altar. That's where the Holy Spirit will come as he's been dealing with you. He's already arrived on the fifth row. He's already arrived on the front row, second row. That, that God is, God's there. God's there with you. You can pray the prayer right where you're at. If that's you, would you lift your hand? I'll lead you in a simple prayer. God bless you, mom, dad. God bless you, sons and daughters. God bless you. Anyone else? Yes, sweet people here in the name of Jesus. God bless you, son. You're a man of God. Amen. We pray this prayer together. We say it out loud, not out soft, loud enough that we can hear it in our our own ear. And at Living Faith, you don't pray alone, especially on Father's Day. Uh, We pray this together. Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner. I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that He died for all my sins and that He was raised on the third day. And I want to trust Him. I want to follow Him today. I want Him to guide my life from this moment forward. I follow you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, celebrate big time. Sons and daughters family of faith. What a miracle. Thank you, Jesus. If angels are partying, maybe they'll let you one day share that experience because it's okay. Amen. We get excited here a little bit, but anyway, I, at least I do. Hey, uh, there's, a, there's a book that I want you to have if you lifted your hand, and it's called The New Believer's Handbook, and it's uh, right now at the Welcome Center. Jill Tuttle will give you that book, plus she'll give you information about our Growing in Faith class that you can take. And I want you to have that book because it's free. I want you to have that. If you're on screen and you prayed the prayer, we'll send you this book free. Just reach out to us. There's ways to do that. And uh, make sure that you get that book. It's a basic belief book, and it's a small book. You can read it probably in 30 minutes and go through it as a Bible study in the name of Jesus. Right, everybody? 
there, there, are, there are gifts for dads that we have, photo ops um, right in the back of the sanctuary right there that you can take cool pictures. Let your children drive the car today. And you, dad, get in the passenger seat and make those funny faces. And then what you can do also, would you go ahead and post them? Um, many of you know Linda's. You can do that and you can find it online. But if you'll post them, Living Faith SA, you'll find us on social media. Make sure that you post them or send them to Linda. She'll give you information on how to do that. Um, and that'll be a good thing. That'll be a blessing. And that way we get, get those posted. Um, there's donuts for dad. You'll get, if you didn't get one, there's enough maybe for two. We want to make sure that every dad gets a donut and then we let the children loose. Give me a good amen. Let them get all that together. I, I believe we want to give gifts to dads. I believe our ladies of faith are going to help me. Um, ladies, if you'll come. Dads, if you'll, after they get them, and you'll see them in their hands. Why don't you raise your hand so you get one of these cool gifts. If you want to buy one uh, for your primo, for your tío, um, $5, cheap, cheap. Okay, we'll put it in the men's fund. Or we'll, uh, B, you'll tell us where to put that. <laughs> B, I'm trying to take over on some things and B said, no, no, it belongs somewhere else. Well, we'll, we'll make sure it goes back into the, the church fund, but um, again, if you want one for later, make every every dad. Dad, lift your hand if you're a father here. We want to make sure that you wave at him. These are cool gifts. I, I, I'm taking one. Actually, it's, what is it? Amen. I forgot what it was. I think it's an all-purpose tool. It it it, uh, it does a lot. Amen. You can wear, put this in your toolbox and you'll be a blessing. Amen. My brother Ron, amen, is on the front row. Make sure he gets one, right? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. There you are. All right, good. Amen. You're you're blessed as you get worship team. Why don't you come up and you've been waiting in the wings there, and uh, you're a blessing. So come on up.